Hey everyone, uh, we're going to take a look at 4.8 next and it talks about creating a scatter plot so we can answer a few questions about it. Now, the one thing we have to do is make our plan. So I looked at this information and I was thinking to myself, well, what is the response and the explanation variable? And it kind of asks me in here, it's like, what explains wasting fuel? So that helped me see that my response is what I'm trying to, to figure out anyway, is going to be the fuel consumption. So that's over here, my average miles per gallon, I guess you would say. And over here is my average speed. So I'm imagining that speed is explaining fuel consumption. So I've kind of decided to use this as kind of my x and my y variable. Um, just so that you see when we're putting this into our chart, the coordinates. Um, and next thing I need to do is just kind of plan this out. And so I did, like, I counted by tens down here and by twos going this way so I could fit on there. But Skyder plot's really easy to build. So here's 10, 21, um, and then 20, 13, and 30, 10. And I'm just going to take a moment to fill all of these points in. And then I'll, I'll pause that while I'm doing that. All right, so here I've, I've plotted this, and you're going to notice that when I take a look at this, um, there and they ask you this, they say make a scatter plot, and it says describe the form of the relationship, and they go ahead and say it's not linear. Um, the the form of this one, or at least not being linear, I mean to me this looks more like um, kind of a a parallel that's going to look more like this. And I missed the dots completely, but I think you get the idea. Like, that's that's the shape that I'm seeing. Um, they want to know a little bit about why that makes sense. Like, why does it make sense that um, as I'm traveling really slow, I have good gas mileage, but it goes down into a certain point, and then it starts to increase um, um, you know, as it's going back up. or And, and it, it's not increasing at the same rate it was decreasing. It's a little bit less. but um, you know, that would be uh, something to think about. It says in part C, it does not make sense to describe the variables as either positively or negatively associated. Well, that's because over here, until this point, um, this has a negative correlation, and on this side, it has a positive correlation. So describing it as either negative or positive doesn't really make much sense at all. Um, in fact, the the relationship being strong or weak, you could say that this follows a strong pattern. Um, it's not a linear pattern, but it follows very closely to a pattern. I mean, it very rarely seems to deviate from that by going up and down. So I would say this is a relatively strong relationship, and this pattern, um, you know, seems to, everything kind of seems to fit into that shape. Um, now, what kind of shape that is and what we do with that, we'll, we'll decide a little bit later. But, um, but that's making a scatter plot. We can also add uh, information, and I'm going to point out um, one of the, the scatter plots that they've already made um, here, where they've actually added a third variable, um, a category. So not only did they um, say, here are percents of graduates taking the SAT score, but they said here are the Midwest states and here are the Northeast states. And so you'll notice, and I was kind of commenting about that before, they changed it and we can categorize these. Like here's the Midwest states where not a lot of people, only about 5% of people on average it looks like are taking the ACT or the SAT, whereas in the Northeast states we have a larger percentage from about 65 almost to 100% of graduates taking the SAT. All right, then we see, um, you know, the, because of that category, we have here's an example of Ohio, and here's an example of, it must be Indiana. I don't really think of that as a northeast state. Um, but, uh, but so we've got the, those states um, kind of listed here. Or no, excuse me, here's Indiana is the, the circle out here. So Indiana from the Midwest states is a really a big outlier. Um, you know, it, because it's way over here. So I guess that's why they labeled that one as, as Indiana. It is a Midwest state. I didn't notice the circle on there. Uh, 
but you can also um, you know see that this does lead this is kind of a misleading looking graph it makes it look to someone who's uh, not observing it carefully it makes it look like Midwest students might be better at math than the Northeast states and that's not at all what this graph is saying um, I mean basically again it comes down to why are there so few people in the Midwest taking the SAT and who are these people that are taking it so that third variable that's thrown in there, we can talk about how that influences the data. All right, so now I've jumped back to 4.8 and I'm working in Microsoft Excel and I'm going to um, first of all chart um, this information. So uh, let me go ahead and select these cells and I'm going to um, insert a chart here, just a graph. So let's make a scatter plot of the graph that I had before and you'll see it looks very similar to what I had done. Um, so there's my scatter plot. I want to find the correlation and you're going to notice a very complicated formula, one we very rarely use again, um, kind of described, but it's important as always to, to see it. You're going to see a formula um, that's written as the correlation equals um, 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of, and this is going to look familiar, x minus x bar, and this is an i, divided by the standard deviation of x, and y minus y bar divided by the standard deviation of y. So let's think about the things that we would need to be able to do in order to figure this out. Um, first of all, uh, we are going to really be taking the sum of all of this. So first thing I need, I need the standard deviation of x. Okay, and we did that before, which also involves some summation. So, and I'm going to need the average of x. So let's go ahead and build this a little bit. So let me go ahead over here and say um, here, and just so we see it, the fuel consumption we have is y and here is x so x and y so let's do this um, let's do it over where we can see it let's say it equals the standard um, deviation and I like this one of speed all right and let's do the average of the speed Oops, forgot the parentheses. Or to hit, okay. Equals average parenthesis of these ones. Boom, and this is supposed to be a 10, so let's put that in there because that will change that. Um, and so here is the standard deviation, and here is the average. And here is x, and here is y. And let's do the same thing for um, these other ones. I wonder what will happen if I copy that formula over. It did row b, perfect. And copy this one over, and it did row b as well. I can look up here and see that it did row b. So here is the standard deviation of all the x's, um, and the average of all the x's, standard deviation of all the y's and the average of all the y's. So I would need to take each x variable, all right, and let me get my pen back out. Um, I have to take each of these x variables, so like 10, and I would have to subtract the average, and I would divide that by the standard deviation of x. And I would have to do that for every single one of these and multiply it by the y, so I'll start with the y variable, so I would have um, 21 minus uh, its counterpart is standard, or average is 9.88, and then divided by 3.81, and I would take that and I would add it to the next one. So the next one, uh, I would end up, and let me move these over here. Whoops, that's weird. 
see if we can't grab all of it. Huh. <laughs> interesting um, so I will move it I will just leave it where it's at I'll just write it down here so the next one I would do uh, the 20 minus 80 divided by 44.72 and then multiply that by the next one is 13 minus 9.88 divided by 3.81 so you see it's it's a really complicated formula because you got to do that each time multiply them together and then add it all up so I'm going to build that formula in Excel really quickly. This is just a review. We'll look at other ways to do it as well. So in order to do that, I am going to stop inking. And right here, whoops, let's move this guy down out of the way. So let's do uh, equals. And then um, let's do all of this at once. So let's say equals. Oops, go down one. It equals x minus the average divided by the standard deviation. Now, I'll point out that you need to have the x minus the average has to be done first, so I'm going to put that in parentheses, um, but that will do all of all of that. Um, I'm also going to point out again, like I want it, to, I just want to make sure it always does I21. So I'm going to put dollar sign I dollar sign 21. And I'm going to put the same thing for here. I'm going to make it a absolute reference. So it always does the same, the same one. And that way, when I drag this down, it's going to do this row A3 divided by I21 or minus I20 divided by I21. So it's always doing the same thing. And now, nice thing is I can drag this over. I've got a problem though. I don't want it divided by I21. I want it divided by J21. So let's fix that formula. Just throw in a J there and a J there instead of I. So now it's using, you can see them highlighted, these two, all right? And I'm going to drag that down. So I did this part. I did um, the x minus x bar divided by the standard deviation of x. That's what all of these numbers are. Remember, I need to multiply them together. So here is, I'm going to put the formula x minus x bar divided by s of x. And here is y minus y bar divided by s of y. All right, so now I'm going to do the product of those two things. And it's going to be an easy one, just equals these two things multiplied together. So the asterisk is the multiplication. And I'm going to drag this down. Boom, there's all my um, products. And remember, now we need to get the sum of all of them. So here's the sum. because we got to do the summation of all of those products. So the sum is going to equal sum of all of this stuff. And I got negative 2.402. And I'm going to multiply that by 1 over n minus 1. So remember, I'm going to count these. I end up with 15 minus 1, so 14. So I'm going to multiply that. last step equals this times 1 over 14. Oops. Let's make sure I have it. Equals I1, oh, I1 times 1 over 14. And I end up with a correlation. You'll notice it's really, really small, almost 0 negative 0 0.17 and that kind of matches that idea we were talking about before that it it doesn't have um, really any correlation in here so one of the things though let's take a look at how could I do all of that without doing all of that 
Uh, actually, let's uh, pause there. Let's stop this video. I'll make a, the next video will be using the built-in functions in Excel as well as uh, Google Sheets. I'll show them both because you'll have to install an add-on for Google Sheets to do it in order to find this correlation. But um, that way we understand, we can see how we would have to do it by hand and realize like, Ugh, I don't want everyone to have to do that. But we need to recognize the, the number, um, what that correlation is, and realizing that if it's close to zero, means there's really no correlation whatsoever, but it could be positive or negative. Again, that's a linear correlation we're trying to see um, and see which direction it's, it's headed.